the collision. One of the injured, uh, uh, operation specialist, second class, Navin Rundum, posted on Facebook message saying that he was okay and he was awaiting surgery. He was telling the Associated Press that he was sleeping at the time of the collision and he's not sure what happened. Well, if you're not sure, my friend, we are not sure what happened. Uh, initial reports indicate damage to port side aft. Extent of damage and injuries being determined. This is uh, a tweet that went out. Collision occurred at 624 Japan Standard Time. John McCain, he weighed in and he said, Cindy and I, by the way, the, the, the ship is named after his dad. Cindy and I keeping America's sailors aboard the USS John S. McCain in our prayers tonight. Appreciate the work and search and rescue. Yeah, the warship, by the way, as I just said, uh, named after John S. McCain Sr. and John S. McCain Jr., both admirals in the U.S. Navy and the grandfather and father, respectively, of the Arizona senator. And the ship based at the fleet's home port, Yukasuka, Japan, it was commissioned, uh, for those that uh, may not know, it's been in service since 1994 and has a crew of 23 officers, 24 chief petty officers, and 291 enlisted sailors, according to the Navy's website. Just not good news, folks. General Mattis, he talked about it today, and this is what he had to say. I want to begin by saying that my thoughts and prayers are with the sailors and the families of the USS John McCain. Um, we obviously have a, an investigation underway, uh, and that will determine what happened. Uh, I also fully support uh, the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson's efforts right now. He has put together a broader inquiry to look into these incidents and to determine any of the causal, causal factors, uh, to determine uh, what's going on, uh, both immediate uh, contributors to this incident, but also any uh, any related factors. And once we have those facts, we'll share them with you. I mean, what in the world is going on? These guys train for better than this. They say for quick thinking and because they do train for eventualities, things could happen. Of course, damage is one of them. They were able to save more lives and get the flooding under control in these compartments. But thanks for the thinking, quick thinking, more people could have been killed, but missing people. I don't know how that happens. I don't know if they're uh, on deck and just get flown off. I have no idea. But completely missing, at least 10 sailors are missing from aboard that ship. Unbelievable. And uh, no, no, uh, no sign of anybody being recovered from the waters at this time. Still holding out hope, you just never know. Sometimes you hear of stories, planes going down and somebody being alive. Maybe there's some people alive, but it just doesn't look good at this time. Again, you get this type of, uh, uh, it's human, you, you know, obviously somebody, somebody wasn't paying attention. Somebody wasn't looking out. I mean, when you have that many people aboard that you're responsible for, I just... Human error, man, it just, it always seems to be the, the very case in negligence. And I hope to God there wasn't a bunch of senior officers drunk. I just, I, again, it just, it, it, it angers me, I guess, uh, just to see that people are that lax with that many people and souls aboard. Uh, it'll be interesting to find out what happened here. Of course, you know, we'll be telling you all about it when we find out and I'll give you my t <laughs> my two cents about it, but it's, it, it is irritating because I have friends and family that serve in the military and you're not, you know, these guys are not missing because they were in war. They were fighting the enemy or anything like that. They're sleeping peacefully, um, you know, and uh, get awakened because they hit some kind of oil tanker. You gotta be kidding me.
that's the news you get. You know, there's family that are just madder than hornets saying, what the, I mean, they want to know, and they will get to the bottom. They'll find out soon enough. I mean, come on. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like there was any kind of warning, at least that we've heard right now, that something was going to hit or people took cover. It's just it happened. How does that happen? Is there not any kind of sensory uh, items uh, on that? Is, uh, is there not anybody on uh, Port Watch, Starboard Watch, where they radio back to the helm? <laughs> And uh, say, you know, we need to we need to speed up. We need to make some contact with the with the oil, the the, the, the freighter that's heading our way. It's going to hit us. Uh, get out of the way. It doesn't seem like any of that happened. It just happened. How do those things happen? I have no freak accident. I mean, come on. There's somebody was asleep at the wheel at the helm. Unless there was an amazing uh, computer glitch, somebody hacked into the computers, they had no idea. But there's visual. You're telling me nobody saw that freighter? Full report from everybody aboard. You know, everybody's going to be questioned. Man, but to have that many people end up dead could have been worse. But anybody die in 10? People injured, not a good thing. In Florida, we have a lot of fishermen here. You probably get some of your seafood from us. If you're not in the great state of Florida here, we have some great schnook and other things in our waters here. But four fishermen in Pensacola, Florida, had the hunt of a lifetime is what they called it. When they caught an 11-foot alligator. And, uh, yep, they, they caught it themselves by catching a 12-footer two days later, uh, in addition to that, 11-footer, then a 12-footer. The uh, men I'm talking about, Nick Naylor, John Booker, Casey Shields, Kenny Way, they, they caught an 11-foot, 375-pound alligator. That's a big gator, folks, in Blackwater Bay on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, according to the Pensacola News Journal. Took them three hours to fully snag the reptile, which they killed and took to a nearby, uh, I guess, restaurant <laughs> that makes gator bites. Uh, then on Thursday night, the group spent two more hours wrangling an even bigger alligator, like I say, 12 feet, six inches. This is according to a Facebook post by Booker. And the longest alligator captured on record in the state of Florida is 14 feet. 14 feet and a half inches, according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Florida's alligator hunting season began on Tuesday, so people are out in full force. Happy gator hunting. Get your gator bites on. And I say that with a southern twin. Um, a twinge in my voice. Do you like it? Well, you know, if you live in Florida long enough, you get some Southern going through you. Some people don't even think that this is the South, but I do hear twangs in people's voices. It's not like a Southern twang, but we do have a lot of Texans here. Florida's very transient. Um, Gator bites are very good. Tastes like chicken. People say that frog legs taste like chicken. I have not partaked in that delicacy. I mean, if it tastes like chicken, why don't you eat chicken? Well, gator bites are... We, we we feel like us eating gators here in the Sunshine State is that uh, we're we're ridding the uh, the predators uh, and, and uh, people do eat them. You, you look them up and uh, yeah, some nice Romaldi sauce. You dip it in there, a little spicy. Mmm, gator bites taste like chicken. Do your part, please. Get them wherever available and you can get them shipped in by the way <laughs> they're very addictive yeah they really taste great and supposedly it's uh pretty lean stuff too uh the meat from gators clinton by the way uh back of the news well at least an aide but uh clinton paid huma abedin nearly 65 grand 
65 grand from campaign funds since her defeat. Yeah, that's right. The failed Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton paid Uma Abedin nearly 65 grand. And I'm like, what do you got, Uma, on Clinton? What do you got to pay her that kind of money? Record show um, Abedin, Clinton's longtime friend and aide who served as vice chair of the campaign, had been paid 64415 in salary from Hillary for America. Clinton's campaign committee since mid-November, and from mid-November to the end of March, Abedin was paid $52,180 from Hillary for America. From the beginning of April until the end of June, and Abedin was given another $12,234.45 from Clinton campaign committee. Now, Abedin is not the only individual who is still receiving payments from Clinton's campaign. Nick Merrill... Nick Merrill, that is, Hillary's former press secretary, was still receiving checks for the campaign as of late June, the end point of the uh, latest uh, uh, available figures. Robert Russo, who was the director of uh, correspondence and briefing for the campaign, now carries the same job title, the office of Hillary Clinton, and still being compensated for Clinton campaign committee as a number of other staffers. Clinton has also sent $800,000 from her campaign funds to Onward Together. Onward Together, that's the name, a resistance group that uh, she launched earlier this year. Now, this information, all of this information obtained by Washington Free Beacon, uh, and it's just interesting information, but the Onward Together, this resistance group, That sends people out to, uh, yeah, aggravate, exacerbate stuff that that, uh, Barack Hussein Obama did, stuff that the left is great at. Because there's still this big, grandiose movement to try to get Trump ejected from the White House, whatever they can possibly do. Because they, so far, to date, they have not been able to do it, but they are determined, hell-bent, rather than coming up with new ideas that will propel America into the future with these so-called progressive ideas. They are negatively wanting to impact the process instead of being intelligent about it and offering sound solutions. And the reason being is they don't have any. So you have to resort to these particular tactics. Because no matter what they tried, money, it, it didn't, apparently it didn't work. Because they had all of Hollywood celebrities, uh, the, the fake news networks, and everybody put money in George Soros. I mean, billions of dollars still didn't win. Still didn't happen. Because the message fell flat. And the delivery girl, Hillary Rotten Clinton, couldn't get the, couldn't get the message across because people did not trust her. And, folks, it's not just Hillary Clinton. Look at the Democratic Party for what it is. Dr. Pat Schott that uh, is on our our show um, tells us that he is really contemplating, and I'll have to check with him probably this week, whether or not he's going to write this book, but been really contemplating writing a book for the Democratic Party, basically saying, get back to your roots where you stood for something. Because if you change your message, you might change people's minds positively for a country. See, if they just learn something from the playbook of Donald Trump, how he was able to win and really study those integral things, then they would be able to understand what resonated with so many people. But they won't do that. Or at least right now they're not doing it. And for all of those people that voted, they say it was all the deplorables. It was all the high school dropouts, the uneducated, the lowest denominators voted for Donald Trump. Excuse me? I know a lot of people, the two, two, three PhDs that voted for Donald Trump. The educated did vote for Donald Trump. A lot of these alumni from Liberty University that want their diplomas back angry because he wasn't tough enough, apparently, with the white supremacists or the neo-Nazis.